Hello again and welcome to our latest video here on the YouTubes. My name is Jay Tate. I am publisher of AuburnSports.com. And today I'm going to talk with you just a little bit about Alan Green, Auburn's athletic director, who was rumored as recently as last week, well, as recently as yesterday, actually, beginning last week, uh, to be associated with the search for a new athletic director at Southern Cal. Uh, that had some people at Auburn kind of anxious wondering if he would actually leave for Southern Cal, how that would affect Auburn, how what the optics would be for Auburn. But that will not happen. Uh, the reports this afternoon are that USC is going to hire Mike Bone from University of Cincinnati to be its new athletic director and that Alan Green is going to be staying put. Uh, I looked into this earlier in the week when I started hearing a little bit more about it and determined that Alan hadn't spoken with anybody at USC. USC hadn't even tried to get in, in contact with him. Athletic directors don't really have posses. So, you know, when you say, hey, has any of your representatives spoken with him? You don't really have to do that. He just didn't have any contact with him. There was a rumor that he was out on the West Coast talking to USC last weekend. He was actually in Seattle. He was being inducted into his high school's Athletic Hall of Fame. So that's kind of where he was. And I don't think Seattle and Los Angeles are real close together. So, anywho, I got that dispelled, and I started thinking that this whole thing was just kind of BS. As I looked more deeply into it, I found the story of the Mercury News out of San Jose saying that uh, Alan Green, according to industry sources, is someone that USC might be interested in. And so what that tells me is that, you know, Alan Green is very popular among ADs. He does things that ADs endeavor to do in that he is a very professional dude. He makes decisions rationally and calmly. He has a close eye on fiscal responsibility and he runs the Auburn Athletic Department like a business, and he does it credibly. ADs appreciate that. People who approach it very professionally and who are out there to helping other ADs learn how to do that themselves at their places. So yeah, Alan's very popular among industry sources, people who are ADs, and I could see why they would think, hey, if you're looking for a great AD, Alan Green's somebody you ought to take a look at. The thing is, Alan Green came to Auburn from Buffalo, and so this is definitely the biggest job he's had so far. It's a big job, and he's been here a little bit less than two years. Most ADs are in their jobs anywhere from four to ten. So he's just kind of getting started here, and I don't know as though he's ready for a, a job like that. And you could argue that Auburn's a better job than USC. I don't know. This seems like there's a lot of turnover at USC, a lot of pressure on the football team. And if you read the stories now, it sounds like they're hell-bent to hire Urban Meyer over there. And, you know, if I'm an AD walking into a situation, I don't really want to be told – who I'm going to hire as my football coach, particularly if it's Urban Meyer. But anyway, I'm getting off track a little bit. Alan Green is not going to be going. He's going to be staying at Auburn. And the reason I did this video, aside from that, is I was at a meal recently with some of our subscribers. And these are folks who are really into Auburn. These are people who know all the players, all the backstories. And they asked me, Jay, is Alan Green doing a good job or not? Because we really don't know. And it got me thinking, you know, Alan Green came here to be much different than Jay Jacobs. I think Auburn needed to go in a different direction after Jay Jacobs was here for whatever, 10 years or 15 years. And they certainly got that in Alan Green. Uh, he could not be more different than Jay Jacobs. And I think that's a very good thing for Auburn. One thing about him that is different from Jay is that Jay liked to lead from the front and everybody knew Jay. And Jay will love get in front of a camera and be like, hey guys, how you doing? Alan is the opposite. Alan wants to sit in the dark, metaphorically speaking, and he wants to promote the coaches and the student athletes and kind of work from, you know, the second level. He wants them to be the ones that are promoted, not him. He feels like that's not fair. Now, maybe that's part of the reason. Maybe part of the reason for that is that he's a former student athlete at Notre Dame. He was a very good baseball player there, ended up playing professionally with the New York Yankees. He's obviously a great high school player in Seattle. Maybe he just remembers those days and he thinks that he should be doing that for his student athletes. That that's the way they did things at Notre Dame. I don't know. But sometimes I wonder, people don't even feel like they know Alan Green. They know who the athletic director is, but they don't know him. And it's because he prefers to work behind the scenes. And it got me thinking, why don't I help these folks understand a little bit about Alan Green? Since he won't do it himself, I'll do it for you. So I put together a little overview here. Five bullet points about Alan Green that you should know about him. Number one. Let's be real. 
What's the biggest thing concerning people at Auburn these days? It's the football team. They're mad about the loss to Florida, the loss to LSU. A lot of people think that maybe Gus ought to be going on his way out. Some other people think, hey, we need to be calm and see how this thing plays out. But either way, there's a lot of skepticism about if Gus is going to be the long-term solution for Auburn. And uh, <laughs> Allen's in a tough spot, right? He was hired one month after that nego- after that deal was negotiated that Malzahn's under right now, the $7 million deal where 75% of the value of the remaining contract is guaranteed at all times. It's a crazy deal. It's a crazy buyout clause. I don't think any rational businessman would have ever agreed to something like that except for an agent. And the agent was smart. Jimmy Sexton was negotiating with a university president who didn't know what he was doing as far as that. Jay Jacobs was a lame duck at the time, and Alan Green was a month away from getting hired. So Alan Green is having to make decisions about Gus Malzahn, not today, but at the end of this season, at the end of last season, based on a contract that is incredibly tilted toward the coach, and he couldn't really do much about it. I mean, last year the buyout was $32 million. If Allen really did decide, I think Auburn might be better off without Gus Malzahn. He's got to find a way to cover a $32 million buyout. That's crazy. If it was $5 million, you think it would have changed his mind? Well, I don't know, but if he had some thoughts about it, about letting Gus go. $5 million sounds a whole lot better than 32 And even if this offseason comes up again, it's going to be $26 million or something in that neighborhood. It's a tough contract. It's a source of a lot of frustration in the Auburn sphere. And it's something that Alan Green has to deal with and he had nothing to do with. But anyway, I thought I will put that at the top because that's something that everyone's really concerned about and it, it affects Alan every day. He also inherited a, a messy situation with the basketball program when he was hired. If you remember... Uh, BP was kind of in a standoff with the president at the time, Stephen Leith, who wanted to sit down and kind of debrief BP in the weeks and a few months after Chuck Person was arrested, which I think is a reasonable stance. But then BP's counsel was like, I don't think you should do that because if you're forthcoming, the NCA might take that the wrong way and blah, blah, blah. And so BP thought it was in his best interest legally to not answer those questions. Leith took that as like a personal affront to him, and it got really nasty. Jay Jacobs was a lame duck at the time and was like, I can't help you guys. So Allen walks in, and he managed to kind of soothe some frayed nerves, and he eventually got the two sides to sit down and kind of talk it out. And I thought he did a really good job being a peacemaker there and got it all healed up, at least as healed as it could be. And... The rest is history, of course, one of the greatest stories in Auburn athletic history. Getting to the Final Four, Bruce Pearl, obviously, uh, as good as it gets for Auburn basketball, and he's taken it to heights that, you know, hopefully aren't a one-time thing, right? I mean, because we all had fun at the Final Four. It's great to see that. From my perspective, I mean, I know all these kids. I know how hard they work, and I'm glad to see them get rewarded with all that national pub and just kind of getting to the top of college basketball. It was awesome. And I think Allen played a role in that. I mean, obviously, BP and his staff and the players did an awesome job. But I think a lesser AD might not have been able to sue that thing over. Because I'm telling you, Leith at one time was hell-bent on firing Bruce Pearl. No doubt about it. Uh, number three, prefers to work behind the scenes. This is why a lot of people don't know Alan Green. He doesn't lead from the front. He is a leader. And he works tirelessly. He's up there all the time. But he's just not a guy that wants to get in front of the camera. And so people don't really know him. I've been with him two or three times... Well, two two times recently when he's spoken to groups, alumni groups, and he's really good in that environment. You know, it's him and 50 to 100 Auburn folks, and he does a great job with his presentations, and he's also good about answering questions and just being professional but yet forthcoming enough. Do you know what I mean? And he just doesn't like to do that on a big level. He doesn't like to get on TV. Uh, When there's situations where he could get on there and give a big interview, he doesn't. He tries to get the coach to do it because he thinks he should be promoting them. And to him, it's the right thing to do. It's just, I'm not sure people feel like they know him. And at some point, that's a problem because the AD is the top executive of Auburn Athletics. And I think in a way, everybody should know him. Maybe that's partly because Auburn's in the South and we kind of live differently down here. And everybody kind of knows each other and you want to feel like you're kind of sort of friends with folks around you. I didn't feel that way when I lived in San Diego as a younger kid, but I feel it now. I've been here 20 years now. I feel like I kind of want to know my neighbors, want to know the people I'm around. I don't know. 
Maybe I'm wrong about that. Number four, logical decision maker. This is obviously a big change from the way things were at Auburn before, where I felt like a lot of times decisions were a function of trying to curry favor or placate this person or that person or this concept or that concept, and it wasn't necessarily about what's best for Auburn. It was more about what's best for the person to whom I or we are beholden to. And Alan Green came in with really no ties to Auburn, and he really hasn't built many. (laughs) And he tries to make decisions based on what's best for Auburn. It sounds like a no-brainer. Well, of course the athletic director wants to do things that are right for the organization, but it wasn't always like that here. You know, back with David Housel, not maligning him at all, but, I mean, that was just a different era. I mean, you can kind of delineate things before (laughs) Before the SEC Network and after the SEC Network because that's when the money really took off. And I think the pressure on that job took off too. There's so much money involved now. And there's a lot more pressure, I think, than there was when David Housel was there. But, you know, as as time went on, it became apparent that Jay Jacobs, although very good at certain skills, was not a particularly gifted athletic director. And it was time to make a change. Alan Green... um, He's a very logical decision maker. Again, as I mentioned, everything is what's best for Auburn. If you think that I should spend this much money on your program, explain to me how this benefits Auburn, how this makes you more competitive, not because you just want something. And that's different than it used to be, that's for sure. And his button-down demeanor. You can tell the guy's not from the South, right? I mean, he grew up in Seattle. He's working in Buffalo. He went to school at Notre Dame. He has kind of like this almost like a blunt affect when you're talking to him sometimes. He's just kind of matter of fact about things. I happen to like that because I'm that kind of person myself. But I think in the South, sometimes it doesn't play all that well. And, um, yeah, sometimes he just doesn't maybe joke around. He's not as affable. I always think of guys like Tuberville, who was the ultimate politician, who, <laughs> who is actually now a politician. And Jay Jacobs, too. You know, he's just kind of the guy, hey, how you guys doing? It's good to see you. And that's not necessarily how Alan is. If you're talking to him one-on-one or whatever, he's cordial, he's fine, but he's just not a politician per se. And it makes it so he has kind of a low profile. Anyway, the thing I wanted to drive home here is I think Auburn is lucky to have Alan Green. I think he's the right guy at the right time. I think he's bringing kind of a, a mental toughness to the job that they didn't have before. And I think he's really big on promoting Auburn making Auburn better with every decision that I make, with every program that we have, and bringing a lot of accountability to everybody in the organization, not just coaches, whether they win or lose, but administrators too. It's kind of new thinking at Auburn, and I think it's very needed. And as I mentioned, I think he's the right guy to move it forward. I'm sorry that a lot of you guys don't necessarily know him yet. I think you will in time. But anyway, that's a little... uh, vlog I guess we'll call it on Alan Green a guy that I think uh, you should be really happy he's an Auburn guy my opinion anyway guys thank you for taking time to watch this video about Alan Green if you like the video or you like these other videos we've been doing be sure and click that subscribe button give me a thumbs up if you like the content if you got some suggestions or if you have a different point about Alan Green let me know in the comments I'll read them there's no doubt about it till I see you next time Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.